Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today, God. We ask that you touch us in a mighty way. God, we ask that you set us up for this supernatural breakthrough. You anoint us with the right words to say in our spirit, man, to open up the doors of heaven so that you may pour us out a blessing. God, we rebuke doubt. We rebuke unbelief. And Jesus, we accept you as not only Lord in our lives, but also your descendants from Abraham. We know it was religion that overtook you, but we thank God that was part of the plan. Plan for our miracle and our breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you. Uh, Sunday's message is uh, about Rosh Hashanah. I'm not going to litigate that today. Uh, the message is blow the trumpet. That's kind of simple. It's uh, the dedication of trumpets, the feast of, uh, the feast of trumpets, uh, uh, or Rosh Hashanah's happy new year, or happy ha second half of the year. And, uh, but uh, we're going to deal with that on Sunday. Today we're going to continue in the series of uh, uh, what we are in, uh, where our spiritual heritage is. I want you to understand that we have been fighting off m over 2,000 years of blame. We've been fighting off over 2,000 years of hurt. We've been fighting off over 2,000 years of uh, shifting responsibilities of Jesus' death to what we thought were the Jewish people. How could we, how could he be part of the family that killed him off? That's what has, we've been fighting in our mind. We, we've been fighting that, especially in the, in the African American church. The African American church is either two, they've gone so far, well, we're the new Jews. Have you heard that before? We, we're, we're, the new, uh, we're the new oppressed people, so uh, it must be the, the Bible must be about us and how you can, uh, you can uh, trace Shem all the way back to Africa. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. All Jewish people somehow made it to Africa and out. Just in case y'all don't know, Egypt is not outside of the continent of Africa. It's part of Africa. But you see all this, uh, this black theology with Nefertiti and, and, and Tutankhamun and all that stuff. And, and then they want to be a man and woman of God preaching Christianity. And, and they have it twisted. You can be proud of who you are. Amen. My black sisters look wonderful, but my white people also look good. Amen. They also, they also, uh, they also uh, been through some things. This, this spiritual walk is about our relationship to Jesus and the pain that he went through, the pain we're supposed to go through. It's not, it, it, you think, it, the Bible says, think it not strange uh, that you're under attack. They attacked your daddy. They attacked your, your granddaddy. They attacked everybody that was related to Jesus. That includes you because you've been grafted in. So you got to expect that things that you're going through is attacking you. Amen? It, it, you, let me just help you out. If you're not under attack at some point, if you're not going through at some point, how can you get a testimony if you've never been tested? Mm, I feel like I feel like a priest is right now. I don't know about you, but I feel like there's something going on in the spirit realm. We can understand. We get a breakthrough. This, but in order for us to go through uh, uh, birthing, you got to go through some pains. In order for uh, something to come out uh, uh, of a breakthrough, you had to go through something. Yeah, right? You cannot come, uh, come, come out of something without having gone through something. <laughs> I, I want to see you do that. <laughs> I want to test. What are you? This is. It's like I'm, it's like I'm, uh, yeah, it's like a helium balloon. Give me that, that pink mic, that pink mic. Yeah, you're fixing it, you're fixing it, you're fixing it. 
Okay. Uh, go with me to the book of Matthew, because uh, maybe we miss in the small things. I want you to understand where we're at. Uh, who, how many people had an opportunity to listen to the radio broadcast on Tuesday and got an understanding of where I was talking? Now, this is new stuff. I'm not giving you, I'm not regurgitating the radio broadcast. I'm giving you some new stuff today. And I want you to understand that even in, even in God's dash, it tells a story. Right? When you were born... And prayerfully, when you, your earthly body dies, right, it's a 1969 for me, hopefully 2099, I'm going to be living to forever, right? That's 130 years for those that need to count, because uh, I just want to go 10 more years than Moses. I feel like I could do it, <laughs> right? Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm in the infancy season of my age. I still got two more 46s to go. Amen? So uh, in what happens is there's a story being told during those years, between 1969 and 2099, right? There's a, there's a story going to be told about me. And what that story is determines, tells the story who I was, who I'm going to be, and where I come from. Right? How many people have read an obituary? Right? And in an obituary, it tells you who, you who who you were born from, right? And how many people survived you, right? Let's look at. Uh, I believe I believe Matthew uh, chapter one tells us who Jesus was born from, and we are the result of who. We, the descendants of Jesus, are the story we're going to tell about Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? We're part of the dash. Look to your neighbors, I'm part of the dash. I'm in Jesus' heritage. I'm part of his family because I was grafted in. So I'm a descendant of God. If you're a descendant of God, why don't you just say, I, I am? The Bible tells me in, in the book of John that I have the power to become a son of God. I have the authority. I have been given a documentation. Let me help y'all out. Sometimes we miss it. Matthew 1 gives us the proof. Romans 8 gives us the proof. Romans 10 get, tells us we grafted in. So when we get to John 1, actually, we look at it and we already have documentation or proof that we, ha we can have the right to call Jesus Abba Father. We have the right to call him I'm grafted in. Why? Because then uh, John 1 says you have given authority to become a son of God. Look to your neighbor and say, I am a son of God. Matthew chapter 1. And Matthew chapter 1 gets a little wordy, so we're going to kind of skip through as we can. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David and the son of Abraham. Look to your neighbor and say, he's not just a, 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 a king, he's the father of many. <laughs> we, we miss it right from the beginning. There's one Matthew 1.1 1, 1 establishes who Jesus was. He, did, he wants you to know he was in David's line, a kingly line, and he was in Abraham's line, a priestly line. And Abraham was the father of many. How about how many people know that uh, those were Jewish men? Abraham was not just a, a good guy. David wasn't just a, 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 a good king that just made it. He just made it. These were both Jewish people of Israel. The whole, Jesus is the Holy One of Israel. Why do you think they call him that? Yeah, because he's in the blood. He's the son of David. And they put a comma to let you know that, yes, he's the son of Abraham as well. Let's go. Abraham, then it goes into the line. It tells you, 
Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot Judah and his brethren. Judah begot Pharaohs, Zara and Tamar, Tamar uh, Pharaohs begot Esram, and Esram begot Aram. Aram begot Amadad, Amanada begot Nasson, Nasson begot Salmon. Salmon uh, begot Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begot Obed of Ruth, and Ru Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot who? David the king, and David the king begat Solomon, and, her, and of her that had been the wife of Uriah. Who was Solomon's mother? Bathsheba. So let me help you out. If you was born illegitimate, it's okay. Let me help you with your heritage. Yes, you'd prefer to have your parents married before you were born. But don't blame them for all your mess. Because <laughs> clearly, Solomon got some things right even after you can't say well yeah I, I I was born illegitimate so I I can't amount to nothing I'll never be a pastor I'll never be a preacher I'll never I'll never I'll never I'll never we blame everything going on in our lives because of our parents let me help you your parents gave you one thing life and they didn't really have anything to do with that they gave you dna they gave you your digital coding jesus gave you life god gave you life so they do not determine your future what they do tell you is they can you can look at them and see some trends that you need to fix early uh, <laughs> I'm going to help you today. <laughs> I'm going to help y'all. Somebody go get some help today. Somebody going to say, okay, now I understand what you're saying. You can look at your folks and say, okay, this is stuff I'm going to have to deal with. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You, 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 know your, you truly know your personal heritage because of who your folks are. Or some of you might not understand who your folks are because you don't know them very well. But what happens is you can understand who you should be because Jesus Christ is your daddy. And if you, if you look close enough, you can look like, you can, you can see the twinkle in his eye that looks like you. So stop blaming everything on your folks. Said, begot Solomon of her that had been wife of Uriah. Next one. And Solomon begot Roboam, and Roboam begot Abia, and Bia begot Aja. Go ahead. And Aja begot Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat begot Joram, and Joram begot Oziah. Go ahead. And Oziah begot uh, Joatham, and Joatham begot Achaz, and Achaz begot Ezekias, and Ezekias begot Manasseh, and Manasseh begot Amon, and Amon begot uh, Josiah. And by the way, we, we, we can't skip over, right, the point that Manasseh was a wicked king. All right? How many, how many people know not eat, not everybody in the line is going to be right. <laughs> yeah. Je Jesus is, I, I want y'all to understand, Jesus' family line didn't determine his, his destiny. David did some stuff that was dirty. David sent Uriah's onto war so he could bet his wife. Manassas was a wicked king. He, he excused the things of God. So don't let my grandpa got cancer, my great-grandpa got cancer, my daddy got cancer, so guess what? I'm going to get cancer. That's telling you if, if it's the, in your familiar DNA, that means something you need to go to minister to early. Nothing wrong with you. I get some deliverance for that. Just what did my family do? What's, what, what, what caused them to have radical blood in their system? And 
And Josiah begot uh, Hekaniah and his brethren in the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought back, uh, brought to Babylon, Jeconias begot Salithia, and Salithia begot Zorobel. Zorobel begot Abiah, and uh, Abiah begot Eliakim, and Eliakim begot Azar, and Azar begot Sadak, and Sadak begot Ekim, and Ekim begot Eliud, and Eliud begot Eleazar, and Eleazar begot Mathane, and Mathane begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus who is called Christ. I did all of that to let you know that the writer Matthew, a legalist, before he accepted Christ, did that to prove to the Jewish people who the Messiah was. Right? Right? But it also goes backwards and proves to the Gentiles who the Messiah was. We have to understand that this book was written to who? 90% of the Bible was written to who? The Jews, right? This was their book. Why is it then we question Jesus' Jewishness? Why, I did on the radio, I, I, I had to help the people on the radio, uh, and I had a preacher take snapping pictures while I was on the radio. Literally, I was on the radio, he's snapping pictures because he never heard this before. It's a pastor. He said, man, he said, I, I, I preach the New Testament all the time, and I, I really get uh, excited when somebody brings some new revelation to me. To me, I think this would be, a, you know, not basic, but... This is something that we should understand. This is a foundation that Jesus was born Jew. You couldn't, you couldn't just go in the synagogue and open up the, the, uh, the scripture unless you were Jewish. But yet we just jump over that. And, and he had to be rabbinically trained because he was able to do so. How many people know that uh, Jesus wasn't just a, a good Jewish boy. He was rabbinically trained trained. He was a rabbi. You, they couldn't just call him rabbi, master, teacher, unless he had some training. You don't go from, he was an itinerant preacher. He would, he would go from synagogue to synagogue and minister. You can't do that unless you have authority from some teaching educational place to do so. They have to recognize who you are. Y'all understand what I'm saying, all right? He went to Jewish seminary. It's not what it's called, but he went there, all right? And so he comes out, he's preaching and teaching. He's teaching their concepts. Why? Because he's one of them. How easy is it for us to understand when we could teach the concepts of Jesus because we're one of him? Right? So when we go around preaching the New Testament and, and all the miracles he did and things we did, we're teaching because that comes from uh, our relationship with Jesus, right? And we understand him. But as a Jew, right, he was around teaching their concepts because he was what? One of them. When she touched the, uh, when she touched the hem of his garment, what she touched? A talit. What I'm saying is this is, uh, this is something we have to understand. We have to know who we are. Let, let's look at a couple of uh, things that establish who we are with God. Genesis chapter, no, uh, yeah, Genesis 22. Oh, the audio Bible. Praise the Lord. Genesis 22 is a period where God asks Abraham 
to bring his son to the mountain. I'm going to ask you this before we move on. If God gave you something, something you've been asking for, in this case, Abraham was uh, 100 years old, maybe, right? And the, the child was a child now, so he wasn't just born. So maybe 107. A long time. Say a long time. If God told you, now that I gave it to you, I want you to sacrifice it. <laughs> I, I'm going I'm to use Brother Charles, for example, right? Brother Charles just got a brand new four-bedroom house for him and his daughter. Right? God gave it to him supernaturally, right? With with a, uh, with a picket fence and good school district and the whole nine, right? Now God, now God said, take it and give it to Sister Jessica, number two. <laughs> but he, uh, it, it, because Abraham was being tested, to see if the son had become more important to him than God. God would want to do that for us. Let me tell you, how many, how many times you, 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 I bet you, you don't even recognize how many times God has tested you in that and you, didn't, and you either passed or failed and, and now you're looking back and say, man, that's what that was? <laughs> you mean I was supposed to go and give $500 and I held on to it? Come on now. We recognize, we heard in our spirit. How many times you heard in your spirit you were supposed to do and you, and you did not and calamity came on you and, and you stood on and you just, you just now recognizing it because of this message right here. I'm not saying for you to fix it. I'm just saying for you the next time that you get it right. God's giving you a mercy. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that they gave Moses and Moses went up in the mountain and he gave him thousands of mercies. Recognize God just gave you one of them just now. Maybe two or three, depending on who you are. Right? So he gets there, gets to the top of the mountain, and he said, <laughs> you know, this little boy, he, he must have been about seven, eight, nine years, right? Because he couldn't, they don't say how old he was, but he said, right? He said, <laughs> Dad, where's the sacrifice? <laughs> Think about it, right? He's not dumb. There goes, God will provide as he's sharpening up his knife. <laughs> right? I mean, this is kind of how the story goes. I, I, I'm paraphrasing so you get it. Um, but in the last minute, God gave him what? A, a ram in a bush. Don't you know if God told you to sacrifice something, he's going to give you a replacement? I, I remember for two years... We were out of a couch and love seat. So we heard, we heard clear. It, it was the oddest thing too. We heard at the same time um, to just give away our uh, furniture. Now, normally, if you give away your furniture, you already know that you get some coming. <laughs> the, <laughs> you don't, you don't went over the Nebraska furniture mall. You don't got the replacement coming, right? Uh, uh. This was straight up. We heard from the Lord. People walk in the house, they get empty room. I mean, literally, it was empty. Right? But you have to be willing in your spirit to hear from God like that. That's what Abraham did. Yeah, we've given away TVs. We, you know how much stuff we don't give away. I don't even... Re but we, you got to hear in your spirit and be willing to do it. I got one son up probably back there praying right now that we give away something, <laughs> get a call or something. And he said, now you start speaking in tongues, I know what's going on. <laughs> Deuteronomy 8, 18. This is your inheritance. Look to your neighbor and say, this is my inheritance. This is my destiny.
You graft, or if you grafted in, look to your neighbor and say, I'm grafted in. Yeah, I'm your brother, I'm your sister. I'm in the same family. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to, uh, to, to get wealth, that he may establish, look at this, his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Can I talk to you just for a minute? This is an Old Testament scripture that sometimes gets uh, misappropriated for those uh, that don't believe fully in the Jewishness of Jesus. This is an inheritance for those uh, that are grafted in, in their mind and in their spirit. Right? This is, uh, this uh, actually is dealing with the feast. Go back to the first part of it. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Right? The fe all three feasts are about remembrance. Look to your neighbor and say, I understand. The feast of Passover is thou shalt remember thy Lord thy God. The feast of uh, Pentecost or Shavuot is thou shalt remember thy Lord thy God. The feast of uh, Tabernacles is thou shalt remember thy Lord thy God. What he's saying is you keep a covenant with me, I will get you wealth so you can, uh, I can prove my covenant with you. But if you break covenant because you forgot me, <laughs> don't blame it on me when you don't get blessed. Y'all understand, right? So you look at him and say, man, I'm in there. I'm in there. I'm in there. I'm in there. I understand. Yeah, I know my heritage. I know my heritage. Yeshua HaMashiach. I want y'all to say this. We were in a, 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 we were in a, a, a training not too long ago, and, and, and the guy kept saying, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, that is uh, Jesus the Messiah, right? Uh, y'all know that because y'all go to Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. That's like one of our day one check the box. I got that, right? <laughs> if you don't know that by now, maybe you have not been listening. It hadn't hit your spirit. That's probably why you can't graft it in here at Glory Bible Fellowship. You've been fighting that in your mind. Yeshua HaMashiach, right? Jesus the Messiah, uh, Yeshua is the, the God who saves, right? It's the same name as Joshua. Joshua is a very powerful name in the Bible. God, boy, she's going to town. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua, there's two important Joshua's in the Bible. I want y'all to know and understand this. And this is where the name Yeshua comes from, or uh, Jesus, which is uh, uh, the Greek way of saying that. Uh, Joshua, in the, uh, of course, in the book of Joshua, is established as uh, the warrior Joshua. Right? And then we have uh, Joshua, the high priest, that was prophesied in Haggai. Yeshua is both. The warrior that will fight your battles and the high priest that will be, uh, go behind the veil for you. I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to break a couple myths. I got about 10 minutes to break a couple myths for you. Because we, we deal with this all the time. Jesus lies about Jesus. The 10 biggest lies about Jesus, about Yeshua and his Jewishness. Jesus only appears in the New Testament. That's a tough one for you, right? That's the first one we deal with. 
Jesus, what, pops up on the, on, on, on the scene where? Matthew 1. Matthew 2, right? Where was he before that? Go, go with me to uh, uh, Micah. I want to say chapter 6. And I'm doing this from head knowledge. I think I went to school. Now listen to what the Lord is saying. Stand up, please plead, plead your case in front of the mountains and let its hills. We're listening to your request. Keep going. And we're going to make it to, I believe, verse 3, but go ahead. Or verse 5. Listen to the Lord's lawsuit. <laughs> your, your mountains. What, what version is this? <laughs> I'm saying, man, that reads kind of good, but I, I've never read it quite like that before. <laughs> <laughs> hear ye that, 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 there we go <laughs> if I don't hear it in my thou's and my theirs then we hear, <laughs> hear ye O mountains of the Lord's controversy and you strong foundations of the earth for the Lord has a controversy with his people go ahead and he will plead with Israel go ahead O my people what, what have I done unto thee and wherein have I wearied thee testify against me go ahead for I brought thee out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of servants, and I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Keep going. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, and the Balaam, the son of Berah, answered him, that they may know the righteousness of the Lord. Keep going. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings of the year of what? A year old, of a year old, keep going. Well, the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and ten thousand rivers of oil. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of the body for my sin of my soul? He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. It's a great text, but not what I need it. Uh, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> but uh, it's a great text. I love that last verse. What's, what verse is that? I'm going to preach that. It's powerful stuff. It's, I think it's Micah. Let me look at it. Micah 5. Yeah. Hold on. I'll find it because. Yep. Micah 5 and 2 or 3. How's this off one? Good. Well, let's start with one just so you could get it. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He that lays siege against us, thou shalt smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou, this is important, but thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, thou though be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth that have been from old from everlasting. This is a New Testament scripture prophesying about who? Jesus, Yeshua. Look at well, look what he says though. He's going forth had been from old, from everlasting. He's been there when? All the time. John 1 says that well, what? In the beginning was the was God, what? And he was what? And he was the word, and the word was, he was, the, he, he was with, the, with God, and the God was the word, right? So in the beginning, when? Genesis. When it all started. Who was there? How do we know that? Because the Bible tells us, it says, let us make man. <laughs> it didn't say, God said, let me make man. It said, let us make man, God in the multiple, Elohim. He was there from the beginning. Also, the Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Exodus 15 and 2. What is uh, Yeshua's name? Joshua, meaning the Lord what? Saves. Exodus 15 says, he becomes my salvation. Psalms 98 2, the Lord has made his salvation known. 
This is good for you uh, non-Jews, this text here. Isaiah 49 and 6. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. <laughs> Let me help you out. He was there from the beginning. He wrote himself into you because he was in the word. The, the word is not just a Bible. It's not just a book. It's God incarnated into the word so that it comes off the page so it can minister to you. I know it's a, sometimes that's a difficult concept for normal people to understand. You're not just reading a, stories. You're not just reading history. You're reading God. And God is reading you. How many times you read the Bible <laughs> and, it, 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 and you get read? But this is what it is. You got a question? Give her a mic. There's one right here. Go ahead. Is the gray mic on? Gray? I don't know what color. Silver. Silver. Yeah. Looks gray to me. Right. Um, but you, <laughs> Bethlehem, David's country, the runt of the litter, from you will come the leader who will shepherd rule Israel. He'll be no upstart, no pretender. His family tree is ancient and distinguished. Meanwhile, Israel will be in foster homes until the birth pangs are over and the child is born and the scattered brothers come back home to the family of Israel. Mm. He will stand tall in his shepherd rule by God's strength, centered in the majesty of God revealed, and the people will have a good and safe home for the world, for the whole world will hold him in respect, peacemaker of the world. Amen. And, and uh, this goes back to why we need to be, y'all need to do your effort to go with us to Israel, because we will go to Bethlehem Ephrata. And you'll see where he was grew. You'll we'll go to Nazareth, and you'll look to you'll look, you'll look and see. Yeah, does anything good from Nazareth? It reminds me, anything good come from Flatbush? Anything good come from Miami Pork and Meat Projects? It, it really reminds you of the hood. When you, I, 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 I'm telling you this, we will not overnight in Nazareth. We, we did that for three nights. And I really understood the meaning of has anything good come from Nazareth. Because I was ready to leave after the first night. And we still had two more nights to go. That was 2009. I remember it like it was yesterday. At 2 o'clock in the morning. You just trying to go to bed. I mean, and, and, you know, we already on U.S. time still. We trying to figure our bodies out, and here come the prayers. And then they cook the fish. The fish had <laughs> every bone. <laughs> they didn't have. They don't know about fillet. <laughs> you know, there was no such thing as fillet. It's whole fish. <laughs> it had. You start eating, and it was just crunching. <laughs> oh, ooh. But that's how they eat over there. It just, it's different. We'll just say that. So when anything come from Nazareth, the answer is Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God. Anything good come from Pogamy Project? Yes, Prophet is Adrian Black. Anything good come from, from Brooklyn, New York, Flappers Avenue? Pastor Blackstar. Yes. Hallelujah. We made it out. And our families, of course. I don't want to exclude my loving sister over there. My my brother-in-law, he he just graft he got grafted in. Yeah, you did. You got grafted in, man. You wasn't you was a Gentile, but now you're a Jew. See how it works. <laughs> the Jewish people rejected Jesus as the Messiah as Messiah. That's uh, myth number two. Let me help you out. The whole book was written to Jews, right? The only people that rejected them were the religious folk. 
And we're going to deal with that in a minute. They did not reject them because they called them, they called the, the people, the Christians, the Judaizers. They those ones that followed Jesus. You weren't, there was no such thing as Christians until Jesus became fully engaged because you had to be Christ-like, right? The word Christian is being like Christ, all right? You couldn't be like Christ until Christ came. So it, the book wasn't for Christians. The book was for Jewish believers of the Messiah. You understand, all right? Third, third myth, that the Jews killed Jesus. Now, you've heard prophetess and me say this for a long time. It wasn't the Jews that killed really, uh, Jesus. It's the religious folk that killed him. And let me just tell you, help you out. Religion does kill ministries. Religion and tradition trying to hold on to them. There's nothing wrong with good traditions, right? But with some of us hold on to some bad traditions, and that kill ministries. A faith tradition here is, is a peace offering that we do. That's a faith tradition. But what about some traditions at churches that a woman can't preach? Imagine if we had tried to hold on to that one. How that would have worked in my marriage, let alone the church. <laughs> right? So, uh, we wouldn't have had that church. Well, really, we wouldn't have had one. Right? But, but that's some traditions that churches hold on to, right? That kill the ministry. This would happen. Jesus' ministry was exploding. The Jewish people that became followers of Jesus, it, it outgrew the normal Pharisees and Sadducees and those uh, temple holders that were there. And, and so that's what tried to kill Jesus, although that was part of the plan, right? But we couldn't have everlasting life until Jesus went through what he went through. So that was, was good for us, bad for them, because they, they missed out on the opportunity. So it was those that wanted to be uh, still holding on to their religion, religiosity. I like that word. I don't use it too often, but that's what it was. Another, uh, another myth is Jesus Christ is, is the God of Christianity. Yeah. That's a, it sounds like, well, that makes sense because Christianity has Christ in it, right? Uh, but let me help you out. We believe in the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, what? Three in one, right? If Jesus Christ is the God of Christianity, what happens to God the Father, God the Holy Spirit? They don't get no attention. See how that work out for you. Yeah, if you if you if you give all your attention to Jesus, never give your attention to God the Father or the Holy Spirit. See how that work out for you. Right? So God the Father was there all the time. Matter of fact, we know Jesus was there all the time because he was part of the triune God, the Elohim, right? And the Holy Spirit was there all the time. Why? Because when Jesus left, what did he say? I'm gonna leave you what? A comforter, a Holy Spirit. Jesus, myth number five, Jesus began a new religion called Christianity. We know that, uh, that that's not the case. Jesus uh, just kept in teaching uh, the, the ways of God. Here's the thing. The, the Jews of the time and the rest of the non-believers of the time that wanted to hold on to their traditions and their myths and stuff like that understood who Jesus was. They missed it because they didn't interpret text right. The Bible tells us that he would, come, uh, he would come to us and be a sacrifice. They didn't start anything new. They just didn't believe the prophecies they were reading. The Pharisees and Sadducees were biblically trained. They, they knew they were, etched, they were smart. <laughs> they missed the boat and then figured a way to, un, to, un, to write Jesus out of their understanding. How many people know we do that in the, in the church today? That Jesus will come, the, you hear the word, you know the Messiah is here. He's coming for you, give you victory, and, and you let it go because you, you don't believe or you didn't understand what was going on. 
6. Jesus never claimed to be Messiah. That's a, of course, we know that's a myth because they even they challenged him in the book of Matthew 26. And the answer, he answered and said, that's right, you call me who you, you call me that. He said, he, he said, he said, you said so, I agree. He said, are you the Messiah? He said, you said that, I'll take it. Me and God, me, me and, me and God are one, right? He said, you are the Christ. Peter, Peter said to Matthew 16, you are the Christ, All right? He didn't say, no, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, did, did Jesus go, no, I'm not? Matter of fact, he said, on that revelation, I will build my church. Too many people think, well, he never explicitly said that, yes, I am the chosen one. I'm the Messiah. I'm the one you've been calling for. No. He said he would come humili with humility. He would come with healing in his wings. He would come with peace. He's not going to come and... No, I mean, God is going to elevate him. He need to elevate himself. But w when, when people called him who he was, he never denied it. Right? He, Peter, Peter said, who, he said, who do you say that I am? Who do they say that I am? Some call you this. Some call you that. Then he said, Peter, who do you think I am? Who do you say I am? He said, you are the Christ. Jesus said, okay, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but by the Spirit, right, on that rock of revelation, I will what, build my church. Sometimes we have to recognize who God is in our life. I'm talking about the Jewishness of God. He, he came, and he, the Christ is the Messiah, the chosen one. Who was he? He was the one that fulfilled that. Look to the name that he was the one that fulfilled that. I believe that. And no, myth, myth number seven, that Jesus taught against the laws of Moses. And we know that's not the case. He did not come to condemn the law or destroy the law. He came to what? Fulfill the law. Again, this is another thing that really makes me laugh. When people talk about the, I'm a New Testament preacher. When Jesus came on the scene, baby, there was no New Testament. <laughs> all, there was, all there was was the scriptures. Paul talks about hey, all scripture is profitable for the edific edification of the body. What scripture are you talking about? There wasn't no old New Testament. There wasn't, no, there wasn't even the Gospels wasn't even written yet. He was talking about Old Testament scripture. All, but he said all, th this is what happened. During that time, they, they were only reading the first five books or, and the books of history. They weren't reading the prophetic books. And Paul said, wait a minute, hold up, brothers. The prophetic books were just as profitable to you as the, the Talmud, the first five books of the Bible. Y'all need to stop just reading that because y'all missing out on the revelation of who Jesus was. I got it. Even on the road to Damascus, I'm helping you to get it. Sometimes we need to be kicked off and be blinded or whatever so that we can see who God is in our lives. Sometimes, you, let me just help you out. Some of the things that you're going through personally is so that you get a bigger revelation of who God is in your life. How many people know that sometimes you need a swift kick in the butt just so you know who, to get some get up and go by God? I, I, I'm just going to help you out. You wonder why you're struggling like you're struggling? It's because you ain't been doing some, some things right by God. I, I, can I just be honest? Sometimes, we have to, sometimes you got to understand who you are, right? You might be called to be a bishop, a, a elder, a supernatural destroyer of demons, but the reason why it's not working in your life is because you sitting back and ain't doing nothing. So God will give you a swift kick in the butt, Right? You, you, you might lose a job. You might uh, go through some financial issues. You might get into arguments with people that you never got into an argument before. Why? Because you have not done what you're supposed to do. So Paul said, listen, I was killing, I was killing Christians. 
using the same word that I'm telling you is now profitable for you to use to empower yourself to be better people. Y'all good? A couple more when we'll be done. Jesus did not fulfill the messianic prophecies found in the Old Testament. The misconception that Jesus did not fulfill the messianic prophecies of the Old Testament is predominantly held by Jewish people. This is my Jewish brothers. You, get, you guys get that, right? We, we can go prophecy after prophecy. As a matter of fact, I can walk you through the prophecy of Zechariah. That's why Jesus came in on a donkey to do the, uh, you know where it says Palm Sunday, where he comes in, Hosanna, Hosanna, prophesied in Zechariah that he was going to come in uh, to Jerusalem on a donkey, fulfilled that promise. Matthew talks about that, all the promises that Jesus did, the messianic uh, gospelists. The arguments stem from several key scriptures, Isaiah 11 and 1 and 9, Isaiah 2 and 3, and Micah 4, 2 and 3. In Isaiah 11, 1 through 9, he says, we see a beautiful picture of the Messiah, but not all has been fulfilled. We don't see wolves lying down with lambs, nursing children, playing at cobra's holes, or earth full of knowledge of the Lord. Of course we don't see that. We live in a time where uh, we, but actually, I'm going to help you out. Sleeping with the enemy wasn't about, uh, uh, <laughs> about a movie about uh, uh, abusive, just naturally abusive husband. It was, but that is a wolf sleeping down with a lamb. We, we missed the metaphorical in the prophecy. Right? Of course we don't see uh, women nursing with snakes around them. But in reality, we do see women that are nursing their children with d demonic presence all around them, right? So th that's what I'm saying. So uh, these prophecies are being fulfilled. Isaiah 53, which speaks of Messiah coming as a suffering servant who led as a lamb to slaughter, taking on sorrows, infirmities, and punishment of himself. In fact, piercing for our transgressions, a clear depiction of the crucifixion. And then there's Daniel 9, which say the Messiah is the anointed one, will be cut off or killed from the destruction of the temple, which happened in 70 AD. These are all prophecies about the Messiah that has been fulfilled. Right? What... Uh, my Jewish brothers and sisters want to narrowly focus on the ones that they seemingly have not been fulfilled, although uh, spiritually they can be proven to be have been fulfilled. You understand what I'm saying, right? That one's, that's a myth for my Jewish brothers, but you guys get that. Number nine, G Jewish people do not need Jesus for salvation. There is a false doctrine called dual covenant theology, which teaches the Jewish people that they have separate path to God through the Mosaic and Abrahamic covenant. That means they can go through Abraham and, Mo and Moses without going through Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a special rabbinical writing specifically to cover <laughs> the Jewish people. This is ridiculous, but this is the truth. They've actually written biblical or not extra biblical writings uh, that actually give them a path to, to heaven without going through Jesus. If, let's just use common sense, why would you have to write a separate path to heaven if, <laughs> come on, this is, this is common sense, but this happened. The Jewish, my Jewish brothers and sisters have written extra-biblical commentary that gives them a path to heaven without Jesus. But why would you need that if, <laughs> if you didn't know the only path to Jesus, the heaven was through Jesus? No, they don't word it Jesus, but they word it as uh, the way through, the way to heaven is through uh, Mose, uh, uh, Mo Moses-type teachings or Abraham teach, Abraham, Abrahamic teachings. Yeah. They give special emphasis on the teachings of Moses and the teaching of Abraham 
that overlook the Messiah's coming. As I was growing up, whenever, this is, uh, I guess, a testimony from a Jewish guy. As I was growing up, whenever someone tried to share the gospel with me, my first, his re first response was, I'm Jewish. And I always received an apology. They <laughs> would apologize, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what, what, what was their well-meaning born-again evangel evangelical Christians were doing was to reinforce the lie that Jesus was not, the, was not for the Jews. Yet Romans 1.16 is clear that the gospel was to the Jews first. Paul cried out in Romans 9, 1 through 4, that he would give up his own salvation for the sake of his own brothers, the Jews. Jesus himself said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14 and 16, 14 and 6. And we have the declaration in Acts 4 and 12, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved, making it clear that salvation is through Yeshua alone, for all Jews and Gentiles alike, we would we be the we make the same mistake. We go to somebody and, and, and that's Jewish, and we give up God's authority in their life just because they don't believe. Instead of saying, "Well, you know, Jesus is the way and the life," we just say, "Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bother you with that." Number 10. Go ahead. Amen. Uh, myth number 10. The Jewish identity of Jesus is meaningless because he's a spirit. Well, you know, uh, uh, right? He's the, he's, Jesus is God. God is Jesus. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Somebody said, well, you don't really, it don't matter where he came from. He's three and one. Right? That's, I mean, this is this is a myth. I'm, I'm, this is a myth. We're myth busting right now. There's a, there's a whole show called Mythbusters, by the way. <laughs> Some look at Yeshua as having transcended or finished his earthly identity, seeing him only as the spirit, therefore believing his Jewish identity to be irrelevant. However, his work is not finished. According to Matthew 23, 39, Yeshua must return, but not until the Jews recognize him as king. Messiah of Israel, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In Revelations chapter 5, we see an amazing picture of Yeshua, even before he returns, retaining his Jewish identity as he reigns in majesty in heaven. He is proclaimed the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, and a lamb. Revelations 5, 5 through 6. This is not a coincidence, people. This is important to understand that the reason why... Uh, trouble is happening here in the United States and, and, and continues to happen in Israel is because uh, we have to know who we are. We have to understand our relationship to Jesus and we have to understand our relationship to Israel, right? We cannot sever ties with Israel. We have to tighten ties with Israel. If we tighten ties to Israel, the United States will be saved. The United States is nowhere found in the Bible. It's irrelevant to the things of God. But what it's saying is if we sever ties with the one place that has empowerment through God, it's like cutting off your nose to spite your whole body. 
right? Our, our existence through God as Christians is found in Jesus, who was born a Jew in Jerusalem, I mean, in Israel, right? We find out he's born in Bethlehem, Ephrata, right? We know that he is, he's come, he, he was Nazareth living. He did most of his Galilean ministry in Capernaum. We know that, but yet we want to deny our relationship to the place where our, our, our nation was really founded. And let me just help you out. Uh, when we left in the Mayflower, right, we weren't Muslims coming over. We were Christians coming over. We established ourselves as a Christian nation from the point. Well, as a Christian nation, we cannot deny, which we have denied, uh, our relationship to Israel. The only reason why we got back in the war is because too many of our Israel brothers and sisters were getting killed off. Six million Jews were killed during the Holocaust. Children. That's not the whole family. That's children. Right? We stood by and let them put them in ghettos. We stood by and let them put yellow stars on them. Until it hit home, we, that's when we decided to get in the war. And, and let me help you out. If the Japanese didn't, Pearl, Pearl, uh, didn't bomb Pearl Harbor, we might still not have gotten in. We was out on the outside in the periphery. We weren't even bothering to get in the war until Japan bombed Hawaii. It shouldn't have took all that. We should have been in the war from the jump. Fully engaged. Right now we're sitting here watching uh, uh, ISIS take over all those areas. The only reason why we hadn't done anything is because it hadn't touched Israel yet. It, well, why we got to wait to touch Israel to really get effective in there? Because let me just tell you, the Muslims ain't playing. They killing Christians. They lopping off people's heads on TV, and we sit there, it's a British, a Japanese, a couple of Americans, one was a Jewish man, right, they just, let, they, they just ignored that, I'm just telling y'all, gotta watch, you ignore Israel, or don't support Israel, God is, is not happy, he ain't winking at that stuff no more. I, I, I know we got to end on this, but you have to understand who you are. Jesus is first a Jew, and you need to know the lineage of who you are. You are grafted in. I'm, I, I want to share this with you in our close, and I, I, have, I want you to understand. The reason why we at Glory Bible Fellowship do these feasts is because Jesus did them. It's not, it's not questionable whether he did them or not. It's a fact. He did not come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. As part of fulfilling the law is he would have did all of these feasts. Rosh Hashanah is not a minor feast. Rosh Hashanah is a major feast. A biblical feast established in Levitical law in 23. Levitical, Leviticus chapter 23. It, it was put there for a purpose. The trumpets are going to be blown. We're going to blow the trumpet every day. We are going to do something special on Sunday. Do not miss Sunday service. Have yourself a fire offering. This is not your major offering that you're doing at the end of the month. Have yourself a special fire offering. Not your tithe. Don't, don't, if you tithe 180 every two weeks, don't tithe 160 and put a $20 offering. That's cheating God. But people do it. I'm just warning you now. We, <laughs> I see the reports. I know what, I know what people do. So I'm just helping y'all out, right? Get yourself a special offering. Don't go to McDonald's on Thursday and Friday. Don't go. Y'all know y'all good for that. Just push away. Save that little $25 and say, you know what? I'm going to get at the God on Sunday. I'm not licensing you for $25. I'm saying give from your heart. Somebody said, well, Pastor said that's just $25 offering. I could do that. I know. Unfortunately, I know how y'all go to think. So I'm going to help y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Do, do this right. Understand who you are in God. 
This offering opens the door to these other two offerings throughout this season. This last offering is supernaturally powerful. But imagine if you get in on all three. Imagine that. You can call your family and say, you know what? I wasn't planning on doing something supernatural for this first offering, which is uh, Rosh Hashanah. Could y'all just, uh, let's get in as a family together and do something bigger. Right? Let's, let's, let's stop five dollar in the offerings and start do, doing something substantial to God. Just say, God, I understand who you are. I want the trumpets to blow in my life. I want victory to happen in my life. I don't want you to just call, I just don't want to call the war. I want to be called the victory. You imagine that. You know, we, they always blew the trumpets when war was coming. Like, How about blowing the trumpets when victory was happening? They did that too. I want them. I want both. God, go to war on my behalf, but I'm also blowing the trumpets knowing I already got the victory. I'm not going to preach on message. I, I want y'all to be here on Sunday. It's a powerful one. Uh, and this is going to explain Yom Kippur, but it's also going to give you a preach message like never before. I'm always teaching this. This, this week, I'm going to preach it. Amen? So, so. Prophet, I know you got a couple words. I'm hitting it on you. We were teenagers. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. We thank Dr. Adam Blackstock. I just enjoyed this here time. I was telling someone today, I said, oh, I just, I started to get sad in my spirit when the feast time closes up. So we got to wait all the way to next year, March, or what have you. Amen. I really want us, is all, everyone in here, all the teenagers, is everyone in? Because I really want to lead us. Okay, well, she's, you know, young. At least those, definitely those are 12 and up. We need what Pastor Adam said, some very, you know, some things that we, really, we can't just look over. And we're a generation that is correcting what our forefathers did. When I say forefathers, that means those that, that, was came, that was came before us and didn't know to study Scripture in light of culture. Amen. And so... To a certain degree, you know, we just got to understand that, you know, they didn't understand that. You know, they had to work with what they had. Just like Pastor I was talking about our parents. You know, your parents didn't have an understanding of the Word of God that you have right now. Amen. They had tradition. Some of them didn't know how to read. You know, my father, the reason why I'm so excited, my father only had a sixth grade education. So reading the King James Bible back then and even still now would just become really, but now he's awakening up. So, we have to understand that. So we as a generation of people, I want us to just search our hearts. We want to repent, truly repent for what our spiritual forefathers in their ignorance and some of them not in their ignorance. Amen. We want to repent as a people. So I want you to repent, re repeat after me. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I come before you this day on 9-9 and asking you to forgive me and our spiritual forefathers of misunderstanding our Jewish heritage and misinterpreting scripture. I renounce doctrinal error Forgive me, Lord, if I may have said anything that was out of order or ungodly against my spiritual brothers and sisters, the Jewish people. Forgive my ancestors. Break that curse off of my life and the life of my family, in Jesus' name. And I decree that I have an understanding that I was grafted in, and I am a spiritual Jew, and I have all rights to the promises and blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Use me, Lord, to speak correction and bring about correction in this generation and the generations to come. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We receive the blessing. Hallelujah. Those of you who are watching on the well, we thank you for joining us. Be back here again at 10, 15 a.m. on 9, 13. Amen. Those of you that have your, that know how to blow, that have your shofar, bring those. You can help me because it needs to be blown over 100 times. Amen. So I'm going to need some help. Glory. Hallelujah.